In this episode, we got college basketball drunk. Nobody knows what they're doing. All the ranked teams are going down. NBA, the king, adds to his legacy. Along well, with the NBA, we're going to talk about the trades going insane. Some of the best point guards in the league getting traded. Super Bowl, a few days away. With that being said... What's going on, y'all? We're back once again. First of all, we're going to talk about college basketball because it's unreal what's going on right now. So I'm, I'm going to go through what the ranked teams were that lost last week and some have lost this week. Uh, we'll get into that later. But last week, number one, number two, number six, number seven, number eight, number 11, number 12, 13, 15, 17, 19, 20, 21, 22, 25. All Just lost. about the top 25. I think there was... I don't know how many that is. I could be it's either fifteen or twenty because I counted it. That is insane. I nobody. I like if you're talking about who's on the bubble in the tournament right now. <laughs> anybody can get in. I mean, you got all these ranked teams. Purdue's got one loss. No, they've got two losses. Indiana and then, uh, yeah, I, I don't remember who the first one was, <laughs> but yeah, I mean it, it's insane. College basketball is a mess right now. Um. Yeah, a lot going on. Um. So much movement with everybody losing, winning. Yeah. yeah it's open book. Anybody uh, can, can make the tournament this year. So it's going to make an exciting uh, exciting March. Yeah, no doubt. And we've talked about like, Tennessee's moved 30 times in the top yes. 10. So like y'all y'all go up to two, lose, go to like six, win. win. Like and It's crazy. Up and down, up and down. It's a roller coaster. Yeah. Yeah. It'll, it'll be an interesting SEC tournament too because yes. Arkansas, we'll get into the Kentucky game later, but they – had a very promising win at Rupp. And then, I mean, you all have had upsets. So I think both of you all, very good. Alabama, I believe, still undefeated in conference play. So they're obviously legit. Auburn's good. Like, yeah. the SEC will be very interesting uh, once we get to the SEC tournament. I feel like nobody's really bad yeah. in the SEC this year. Um, I feel like yeah. everybody has a good chance. Um, we Tennessee, I'm excited. We have to go to your all's place, Rupp, and play yep. February 18th. Yeah, I think it's I think that's when it is. But, but yeah, along with that point though, South Carolina's not great. But they beat us, but we were all I, I don't know. I don't really know how to judge them. But like Ole Miss, they're not bad. It, yeah. It's it's like these teams if they were placed and if you take like these average teams in the SEC, you drop them in the ACC, they're probably winning. Yeah, they're a contender. So oh, definitely. I don't I don't know how to how to look at the SEC now because we've talked about how it used to be, and now uh, they it went from horrible to the best conference in basketball. You could argue. Uh, I still think the Big East probably argues that they're better than us, and then uh, the Big 12, obviously. But, yeah. yeah, I mean, Ole Miss, Vandy, those are usually the bottom feeder teams, and they're, they're like, pretty solid Competing. this year. yeah. Yeah, so um, I don't know if you watched this this weekend, the Duke-UNC game, which, in my opinion, I want to see your take on this. Is that the best basketball uh, rivalry? There's um, a lot of people that argue with it, but. A lot of history between the two teams. Yeah. Um, Best rivalry though, in in basketball, we'll keep it basketball. In basketball, yeah, I say it has a good chance. I think it does too. But you, you know, I think second Kentucky Louisville. No matter how bad Louisville gets, I think because if you're talking like blue bloods, Louisville's probably they're not top five, but they're in that five to ten range. Yeah. Um, but for Duke and UNC, that's two of the top five teams. So I think um, like that's probably the best. But the weird stat that I saw, this was like. So from the time they started the Tobacco Road rivalry, it, they had played three times where both teams were unranked, and since 2019 they've played three times when they're both unranked. So this is the third time. Uh, yeah, Duke won this one somehow. Um, it was a good game though. It was in Cameron, so they still got to play in the Dean Dome. But the the story of the game. So well, I've talked about Derek Lively a lot. Uh, basically, everybody. He was the <laughs> yeah, everybody called him a bust early on in the year. He was the number one overall recruit. Yep. Can't score the ball, but he's taken that not being able to score the ball and turned it into one of the best players on their team without scoring. So in that game, he had 14 rebounds and eight blocks. So <laughs> that that that's doing it. He had four points, I think, to go with that, and then um, which they lost to Miami the next game. But he still played very well. Um, Duke and UNC are both teams that I have no idea. If Duke, UNC, and Kentucky don't make the tournament, then did that. Like the world will come to an That's end. That's what I'm. The I, basketball world will go to an end. Yeah, honestly, we, we I think the NIT might get better ratings than wow than the, the tournament at that point. Hot uh, take, hot take. Yeah, that, dude. That, 
That would be insane if they all just made the NIT. But, I mean, we're on the bubble. Duke is somehow still like a nine seed after losing. I think we've lost one more game than they have. But, uh, and I mean, UNC is a joke. I don't know how. Yeah. People still have them on the bubble. But I can see them losing a couple more. Um, I think they've got to beat Duke at home if they don't have a chance. Just because the name Duke boosts you with, like a little bit. I think if you just beat them, um, yeah. it's just kind of one of those things. But, yeah, do you think Duke and UNC like make the tournament? I think so. You think they will? You think they'll like finally get it going? <laughs> it, it, it takes a few months, but. Yeah. Um, you know, as you go on, you learn as a team how to play together. Uh, I think they'll figure it out. They'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, another thing, we talked about Purdue losing. They lost to Indiana, but I want to get your take on this. I think Indiana was 21 when they beat them. But Indiana stormed the court. So here, here's my, my argument for it. So if you bring up the top five programs ever, I think it's like Kentucky, Kansas, Duke, UNC, UCLA. Yeah. But right behind that, it's like Louisville, Indiana, and like a couple other schools that you could argue. So with them being essentially a blue blood, do you think it's, it's poor form to storm the court no matter who you beat? No, because here's my point. Yeah, Purdue's good, number one, right? Storm score, yeah, we beat number one. But, I mean, it's like Purdue, though. Yeah. but like, I mean, they're good this year, and they are they are the number one. So you're saying you should storm the court? No, like, I say they shouldn't. Oh. They, they should never, no matter who they beat. <laughs> if, I think if they were playing Kansas at home. Oh, you're saying because they're Indiana. Yeah, it's because they're Indiana. Okay, they should you. not. And I think because it's Purdue, who they've owned for the eternity. Last, yeah. So I I just think it's it's bad. Luck. Okay. Yes. Definitely agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think if you're if that's a, a Kansas or somebody else with the one by their name, but at the end of the day, you got to think it's Purdue. That's like. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. I was like, yeah, they're number one, but like Purdue has not really been that team. Yeah. Um, and Indiana. Back to what we said. Indiana, like, you have a higher standard as yeah. Indiana, as a school, to rush the court when you beat Purdue, um, when you've owned them for so long. Yeah, and just being the the school you are. Like, yeah, just exactly. being Indiana, you shouldn't. Um, they have, like, three natties. So, uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't really know what to compare that to. And it would be, like, I don't know, Kansas beats Kansas State, and Kansas State's number one. Kansas should never storm the court in that point. Yeah, that don't, that don't look good. And it wasn't even like a buzzer beater. If if it's a buzzer beater, I could see you know like your emotions are yeah, going you're crazy. Like, you like no it gets to you, but they won by like ten, ten plus. So like you knew it was gonna happen. Like yeah. you you gotta control yourself in that situation. But I guess um, somebody tried to say like they haven't really been relevant recently. So it's kind of uh, like their past is forgotten by who's yeah. there now. But I think if I, I bet they're old head fans, I bet they're mad. Like, they were probably, off the storm in the court, yeah. Yeah, they were like, that's not us. Like, we're, we're we should Indiana. win this game. Yeah. Every that, single time. Exactly. They, they, they're they probably going into that. They're like, this is not a game you ever storm the court for. you got to beat these teams. But uh, Now, does basketball get fined like uh, football does for storming the, <clears throat> the court? I assume so. I don't really hear anything about it, though. Because I know Neither. like Tennessee got fined a, like, a good amount, right? I forget the amount. It's like, uh, it's either, these both could be wrong, but I'm, I was thinking it was 50. 50,000 or 150,000? I think, yeah, it's something around there. Because I know it goes up every time you do it. And I know... Somewhere in between. We got, like... I don't remember. We stormed the field against Florida. And that, like, boosted it another. So it was, like, 250,000 when we did that. <laughs> so it, it was, like... Mitch Barnhart was hurting, basically. Yeah. That's, uh... 250 grand. Yeah, gone. Uh, for people just running on the field. <laughs> yeah, that was, um... That was last season. I don't remember. I can't remember what the first one was. But if we beat like Georgia or like we got Alabama at home next year, we're rushing the field. Like yeah, five hundred thousand dollars. Oh well. No, it was a good decision for Tennessee to rush the field against Alabama. Yeah. I wish I was there because I would be right there on the fifty yard line with everybody yeah. else. We did talk about you going. We're like, oh, we were like, hey, uh, you gotta buy a ticket. Uh, that would have been an unreal experience. I and obviously you could have been the iconic guy with the. Where they put the billboard up after the game, it was like the final, and he had the cigar, and he he was like throwing up the the sign. So yeah, could have been me. That could have been you carrying um, the goalposts. I would true I been there through it all. You could have thrown it down in the river with him. Uh, but yeah, I just think under no circumstances 
Indiana should ever storm the court. I don't like them personally. I just I don't hate Indiana, but on I'm kind of on their old head fan side on this one. Don't storm the court in yeah. that situation. But um, so yeah, to talk about the Cats a little bit, um, we lost to Arkansas. That one that one hurt yesterday. Um, we beat Florida over the weekend. Promising win. We won. The second half was weird. We like got up like five seven, and we just kept that the whole game. Like we do, we go hit like a shot you're like oh that's a dagger and then they come in three yeah. and so then it's like four again like yeah it was it was a weird win but we won 72 67 um but then we played arkansas yesterday first half i'm telling you that was the most fun exciting first half of basketball i've watched in years like that wow. that half was beautiful it was i think it was 41 40 at half damian collins had a buzzer beater jumper nobody thinks he can shoot but <laughs> i mean that was impressive Dude, sitting um, on. yeah um but, yeah, so it was a crazy first half. I was like, if we just do this again, I don't care who wins. I'll enjoy watching this game. Uh, but then we just got absolutely manhandled in the second half. We were out physical. We literally looked like uh, we just don't want to make the tournament. That's, that's what I think it looked like. Um, they got up like 15 and just never looked back. Um, and a, a weird stat, that's the second worst um, loss points-wise in the Cal era. So. Well, I think Alabama at Rupp, or yep. just yeah at Rupp, at Rupp. Um, so yeah, that, that's a that's a bad stat. But um, Anthony Black, that dude's top ten pick. I wasn't a believer till yesterday. So I've watched a few of their games this year. That dude is the truth. He had like fifteen five and five probably as a point guard. So yeah, he's legit. He's a he's an exciting player to watch. You can pull from anywhere. Um, but yeah, that that loss hurt. That's this is also. Through 24 games to start the year, this is the second worst record we've ever had uh, under Cal. So wow. the this, worst this, was COVID. Yeah, year? the COVID team. That we don't bring that year up. That that didn't <laughs> happen. Sorry, I didn't but no, no, but uh, yeah. So I kind of excused the COVID year when we were talking about like just records. So this is yeah. basically the worst. So not a good look. Um, I wasn't too worried. Like even after the Kansas loss, this one kind of hurt because mm-hmm. we're going into mid February and it's not. We don't even have a lineup, like, for sure right now. And um, I, it's kind of like we just don't know, like, who the leader is. Because right. right? I've talked about Oscar. I love him to death, but he's, like, a liability on defense. And uh, the guy came into the game uh, for Arkansas averaging four points and scored 18 on Oscar. So yeah. it's just not a good look for him. And I, that's kind of the guy you think is always going to be there at crunch time. But I might have started running, like, Collins at the five. Um, I don't know. But it, it, it's a tough look for the Cats right now. So so defense is a, is is a priority. Yeah, because they scored 88, they, they did, on wow. us. So I think it was 88-73 was the final. But, yeah, it, it was it was a rough game. Yeah. Tough tough watch in the second half. Oscar, didn't you say there were people were starting to learn how to play them as well? Yeah. Um, just doing the little post thing and – are y'all still feeding them like every time? Y'all yeah, down the court. Yeah, we talked because about that the Georgia game. I was like, I'm sick of seeing this. Why are we just feeding <laughs> like him thing. every time? Down the block. Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, I, I don't think I, I told you about this. There was so KSR. Um, somebody brought them a, the scouting report that an Arkansas player accidentally left. So they what? looked at the yeah they left it in the locker room. Oh. Uh, and so he got it, brought it to like Matt Jones, and Matt Jones looked through it, and they like. They were they picked one player to go see what their like uh, scouting report said on him, and it said Oscar Shibway rim runs just stop those hates physicality, and uh, that there was a couple other things, but it was like spot on, and I was like, yeah, wow, you're uh, they they also had every single play that we run and how to defend it, so you're you're gonna win a lot of games like that if you, yeah, if you know what the so. other team's gonna run uh, and you know how to defend it already, so yeah. I don't, know. but yeah, Oscar, he's obviously. Everybody's grandma's favorite player, but I don't know. It's just tough right now because he's he's an undersized five. Is like so. Anytime we play somebody athletic or taller than him, it's like he just gets eaten alive. So hmm. yeah, it, it's it's a question mark going forward on how much he'll be he'll be playing for us. Yeah. So Tennessee, um, a little basketball. Um, we beat Auburn. This might arguably be. One of the worst scoring games I, yeah. think I've, I think I've seen in the college basketball world. <laughs> you could argue um, that. We we did come out with the win, though, 46-43. Um, what is your take? Like, 
great defense, really bad offense. Yeah. Or it was really bad offense with that made defense look good because the offense was so bad. Yeah, I think there was a mix of it that the defense was so good for you all that it took Auburn outside of their offensive game. And then Auburn they had to switch to defensive too. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if Auburn's defense is necessarily like great, but I think they were able to like rattle some of y'all's players and like yeah. get in their head kind of. I think we played great defense. It's our offense wasn't clicking, but our great defense saved us against Auburn. Yeah. Oh, what about the controversy on the last play? Oh, the, foul. The, the three. Yes. You think it was well, a foul as a foul. Tennessee fan? You think um, it was? The only I, I kind of think say, it was. And yeah. I, I, I don't know. It could go either way. It was 50-50, honestly. I would say, remember back to it, when he shot it, some were arguing that he kind of like went into it and then fell backwards. Like when he shot it, he went forward. Um, yeah. And then some said it was just a straight-up foul. Uh it was at home though, so you know a little home, yeah, home cooking a little bit. Yeah, uh, I know uh, Bruce Pearl. He got that red face, started shooting sweat. <laughs> oh, he was mad. Yeah, he was mad. That, that's uh, as worked up as you you will see him. Yeah. So, Rick uh, Barnes was trying to shake his hand. And he was yelling at the ref. <laughs> yeah, he like went on the court and then had to go back, and he was like, "All right, I'm a man. I'm right, gonna." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, but, yeah, that was a a very controversial like yeah. play. Um, Things could have been a lot different. Three th- free throws. Yeah. Who knows if he makes them all? But if he does. Get yeah. a good OT game, then you find you probably break fifty at that point. Yeah, both teams. Yeah, they look like a normal score. So, yeah, that would be that'd have to be the lowest scoring game that includes overtime. Yeah, ever that that's a Virginia basketball score. <laughs> I want to see y'all play Virginia though in the ACC uh, SEC challenge. That would be a- a- outstanding. <laughs> like, because I don't the SEC like we talked about is so good. So mm-hmm. like, we have so many great teams now. I don't know. It's gonna be. Maybe us and Duke or us in North Carolina, yep. just to get like the name or whatever. And then behind that, there will be whoever the second best team is will play the other, like North Carolina or Duke. And like, it might be you all though. But if you all aren't, good chance to get Virginia. So I'm rooting for y'all to be the third best team in the SEC, so I can see the, <laughs> uh, well at the time, that's how I can see right. the Virginia Tennessee game. That would be epic. Because yeah. as much as I hate low scoring basketball, that game would be. Like outstanding, I mean it'd, it'd be great. back and forth like ten to ten at half. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that that would be wild. So speaking back to what we talked about earlier of all the movement and all the teams winning and losing um, in the top twenty-five, Tennessee we fell short uh, tonight, Wednesday the eighth, against Vanderbilt. Yeah, weirdest court ever seen. Yeah, I just have to say that every time I talk about it. We put at Vandy. Vandy hits a last second shot. Um, in the corner, wide open. Guy kicked it out. Hits corner three. Vanderbilt rushes the floor. Yeah. Uh well, what were y'all? Six? Six, yeah. So I mean I don't I don't blame them for it. I guess if they're not gonna win many that are ranked teams, so good win for Vanderbilt. Bad bad loss for the Vols. Yeah. I mean we watched a little bit of it, but I don't necessarily know what Vandy did that may have Yeah. I don't know. Vandy's a tough team, though, especially on their home court. Because it felt like for us when we played there, we kind of just got that hot, like hot start, and then from there on, it was like yeah. we just kept the exact same lead. Like if we would have not had a hot start, then we would have been behind. Mm-hmm. Uh, something like that. But yeah, I guess good good win for the <laughs> the Commodores. So the Vols, I guess we're gonna fall back a little bit. Um, hopefully not too too bad. Um, Probably not too far. I yeah. Don't think. So hopefully we can win some more games, move back up before um, March. Yeah. So and we were talking about the the tournament. I think best case scenario for y'all is y'all ranked like fifth at the end of the year, and y'all get the two seed, and then yeah. y'all get the Louisville region with like Purdue or Virginia, and because I think y'all could beat those teams. Yeah. Like no way around it. I, that that's another reason why that uh, everybody like says the Rick Barnes effect, like the like the tournament. Mm-hmm. Y'all could move far this year because yeah. the tournament is so open. Like, though, like the Admiral Schofield, Grant Williams team, y'all ran into Loyola, Chicago. It's hard to beat Sister Jean. But, uh, yeah, this is a year that it's open, and I think you all could uh, do some damage in the tournament. So Yeah. Yeah, I, I think if y'all get that Wolver region, y'all y'all going to pack, pack uh, the Yum Center. Yeah. So, need some uh, thoughts on the um, the trade that happened literally – an hour ago, tops. Um, Russ goes to the Jazz. Yeah. Do 
you think it's a good fit? I think I, I like it. I like the fit. I do. I think it was a good decision to get him out of L.A. It was weird seeing him come off the bench, I must say. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think Russ is a he's a team player, but he's a very independent player at the same time. Yeah, it's a weird way to like, yeah. talk about um, his game. I think he needs his time to take over a game. Uh, and I just think it, there wasn't like – it felt like there wasn't a connection on the Lakers. I feel like there was like something blocking. The, I don't know. There's something that was just not right. But good decision. Uh, at the Jazz, Utah. Yeah. I right. think it'll work. I mean, people forget how insane he was in, in D.C. And it was the same type of team. Yeah. That dude was putting up numbers in D.C. Yeah. So I think if he's got some left in the tank, he's going to go off. It was the best move for the triple-double uh, kid. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. And the Jazz started out insanely hot for no reason. Nobody knew why. They're like, the Jazz suck. They're going to tank. Yeah. And then for no reason, they were like 20 and 10 to start the year. It was something stupid. Uh, but yeah, also with that trade, the Lakers got D'Lo. So he's making a return to L.A., which I like. Um, I like D'Lo. I like how he plays. He's obviously played better since he was there last time. Mm-hmm. Like more mature, understands the game better. Uh, but along with that, the Lakers also get Malik Beasley and Jared Vanderbilt, which is a name that not a lot of people know, but played for the Cats, played either 14 or 17 games. But weird stat, I don't know why I know it. Um, He's top five in offensive rebound average under uh, Calipari at Kentucky. (laughs) So he's with like Oscar, Boogie, um, Julius Randle. Big names. Good company. Um, (laughs) But yeah, random stat. He's, in my opinion, there's a little bias with it because every time I watch a, a cat in the NBA, I'm like, that dude is the best player I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. But Jared Vanderbilt is one of the best defender defenders and like rebounders at his position in the league. Like, I truly believe it. I think he's going to be a good piece for the for the Lakers. And I just like watching the Lakers because yeah. favorite player and uh, AD. So having another cat there, Winion Gabriel's already there. Uh, yeah, it's just going to be awesome. But then the Wolves got Mike Conley, which most like if you're a casual fan, you probably didn't realize he still played basketball. Because uh, everybody knows I'm from the Grizzlies. Yep. Um, but yeah, I, I think I think it's a good trade, three way trade. So I'm hyped to see Russ with the Jazz, though. When do they make a run? They maybe they just went out. At, what does this mean for the Lakers? I think it's a really good. We haven't talked about Rui Hachimura going to the Lakers. That was the best piece they could have added, I think, uh, from DC. Got rid of Kendrick Nunn, but I think Jared Vanderbilt's exactly what they need. So like with LeBron, how he plays. They've got the other superstar, AD. Yep. He's playing great. They've got the good, the the true like point guard, Schroeder. He's playing good. Rui can shoot. He can like post up down low. Like Thomas Bryant is playing into like his role. So I think Jared Vanderbilt off the bench is going to be huge for them. He's a hustle yeah. player. Uh, he's going to do what you know people will call him pretty, but LeBron and AD may not want to do: dive yep. on the floor, risk their. Uh, do like the dirty work. Arms. Yeah, exactly. He's a coach's player. Uh, and then Malik Beasley, I think he's just a good pickup, just another guy, just yeah. more depth. So, yeah, I like it. And it's not that I didn't like Russ on the Lakers. We talked about it one time, and you would have thought I had something against him. But uh, him coming off the bench worked. But I just – I think him with the Jazz fits a whole lot better. Yeah. Because that's it how – It sounds right. Yeah, it does. It, it He likes – I like him on the teams that don't have the other superstars that are going to take the points, take the – uh, whatever way, because he's he can, what he'll do for them is just like expand everybody else's game. Yeah. Because obviously Russ attracts uh, whatever the best defender, defending guard they have, like the other team. So yeah, We're about to find out if Russ was the problem in LA. Yep, we will we will see about that. Um, but then this happened Sunday, I think he got traded, and Friday was when he requested. Kyrie demanded a trade. Uh, the king of lying. So in Cleveland, he said, somebody told him, don't do us like LeBron, don't leave. He said, I'll never leave, left. Then he said he was ecstatic about the move to Boston. He said, if y'all will have me back, I'd be glad to resign, left. Went to New York, ecstatic about that trade. And then he goes, I would never leave number seven. Talking about KD, left. So king of lying. Uh, but yeah, he traded. Uh, he got traded to the Mavericks on Sunday. Um the Mavs traded Dinwiddie, Finney Smith, and a first-round pick with multiple second-round picks for Kyrie. And in the little asterisk below it, Markeith Morris. Like, yeah. Nobody really knows that he was part of the trade. I think it's 
Because they graded these, and they said Kyrie trade was a D for the Mavs. Yeah. But in like A or something for the uh, for the Nets. Because yeah. there's been I people saying like... I definitely agree with that. Yeah, because both of those guys started. Dinwiddie and Finney Smith. And I, I think it was... One of them's in like a a race for like defensive player of the year, uh, which is I th- I think is crazy. But I think what the Mavericks needed, obviously they've got Dwight Powell is a big, Markeith Morris is a good addition, mm-hmm. um, and then Kyrie. So I heard this on Pardon My Take, which I think is the best analogy you can have for it. When they got Kyrie, now the ceiling is a whole lot higher, but now the floor is lava. That that's a, a good wow. way to put it, because let's see. Yeah, that uh, but that explains it. I think. I mean, uh, cause they were saying worst case scenario for them. Luca hates playing with Kyrie. Luca's like, I don't want to play here anymore. Get me out of here. And then Kyrie's like, you know what? This isn't the place for me. My religion says I should go somewhere else. Goes to L.A. or something like. So they lose both of them in the trade. That would be worst case scenario. Yeah, and then they're stuck, and then they have like a good record. Don't get a high pick, and yeah. Wow. They're uh. But yeah, no. So they could really hit bottom. Yeah, they could go. They could go like that. This could be a really bad situation. Um, but yeah, so uh, here, here's a question that uh, somebody brought up the other day. Do you what? What roster are you taking? If you don't know the rest, you've just got these three guys. Okay. You got KD goes to the Mavs right now, so you got Luca, Kyrie, KD. Yep. Or Kyrie just goes to the Lakers. Kyrie, AD, Braun. I'll share mine uh, after I see what you say, but. Hmm. I would say the Mavs team, KD, Kyrie, and the Luka. Why do you you say them? Just because um, I feel like Kyrie is also not like Russell Westbrook, but is more of a kind of do-it-yourself type of dude. Yeah. Um, I think that showed on the Celtics when he was on the Celtics with Jason Tatum and all them. Um, it didn't really work out. Now look at the Celtics. Kyrie's gone. Celtics are playing well. Um, so if I think he went to the Lakers, I think it would put the Lakers in the same situation as Russell Westbrook. But then again, LeBron and Kyrie's played together before. Yeah. So that's an also thing you could argue. And Luka, KD, and Kyrie are all kind of different types of players. Very. Yeah. So I don't know. So now I'm kind of arguing against my own argument. Yeah, see, for me, I think if you're bringing up like Luka, Kyrie, KD, I feel like in a way they all are ball dominant. Like the it, way they play. Okay, that's a good way to play. Ball, ball dominant, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, Kyrie and KD, you know, kind of worked out in Brooklyn. But um, I think, like you said, Kyrie and LeBron, they've already got that chemistry. And then you throw, when healthy, a top four or five big in the league, AD. Like, I think that trio would be, like, really interesting. Um, and I think the thing with Russ is he can't really shoot. Kyrie's definitely a better shooter. Um, so I th- I would probably take that trio, the Lakers. But uh, the the thing with the Mavs is they'd probably score 200 a game with that those three guys. Mm-hmm. If they had KD, Luka, and Kyrie, that teams would – they would just outscore everybody. Yeah. That's what I think. Um, but, yeah, like, like I said, the, the Kyrie and KD kind of worked out. But – do you think that big three of James Harden, uh, Kyrie, and KD is the biggest bust of a big three ever? Um, that, with everything that happened, yeah, probably. That folded. Because there was so much hype. Yeah. Because they're like, they're like, this is an all-star team. Yeah, they're like, like this got, team is winning it all. Yeah. And I, it was a big letdown. Yeah. Um, so they played 16 games in total together. They played 10 regular seasons, six in the playoffs. So that was when they were all healthy. Um, they went thirteen and three in those games. So yeah. you could say that is one of the best big threes ever because of their record. But then again, I don't know. they didn't play that much. <laughs> yeah, you've got a lot of emotion like in that locker room. I feel like um, yeah. a lot of like toxic players. So yeah, I, I think it's it's a big letdown. But do you think KD is gone after this? Um, after this season? Yeah, I could see him going somewhere. No, no idea where. Yeah, I don't know where. I have no idea. Uh, but yeah, somebody said go throw him on. Uh, or no, no, somebody talking about um, somebody trading Chris Paul to the Nets. 
getting a Chris Paul KD duo, which I think would be that phenomenal. That would be nice. That would be amazing. Uh, with Claxton is good, uh, and then with wow with Dinwiddie and Finney Smith now that 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 might need to happen. Uh, but I know the trade deadline is like two days away, maybe a day away, and there's a lot of rumors about Fred Van Vliet going to the Nets. So that's also another. They just need a true point. I feel like yeah, because that's what uh, I mean. That would change everything for him. I feel like All right. Um, but also a name I didn't even say Cam Thomas. We've talked about him maybe I feel like we probably talked about him when he was like only like in his first year. I don't, I don't know. I know I've brought him up once before, but after Kyrie left, he's dropped three straight 40 pieces. 44, 47, 43. Um and uh he's now the youngest player ever to have three straight 40 plus games. Uh he's had he's had 134 points in his last three. Wow. That dude is balling. Uh so yeah, coming for a points record near future. Yeah, somebody said if he just did the exact <laughs> exact same thing he's doing right now, he'd break the record in eleven years. He's coming for <laughs> get into a letter. The new king. Yep. Of the points. Yeah, somebody said uh Braun's gonna be tripping whenever Cam Thomas beats him to the record or something. <laughs> I was like, Yeah, that would be wild. But yeah, if you y'all don't don't know him, that's the guy that said ain't crap funny. That's <laughs> that's him. So uh but yeah, and a lot of people are extremely surprised and they think this dude's just like a bum. But he was a top 25 recruit out of high school. Went to LSU. Led the country in points menace. per game. A yeah. menace because of how he plays and a menace because of what kind of man does it take to say, ain't crap funny. Yes, Somebody right. asked him why he doesn't smile. And he said, ain't crap funny. That, that's a man right there. And he's like 21. So that's he's got he's got the mentality. Like what worked you up to be like, ain't nothing funny? You know what, though? that I haven't thought about this. That's a Kobe thing. And he said wow. Kobe's his favorite player. I'm a mentality. Yeah. All he wears is Kobe's. Kobe's his favorite player. I bet he got that from... Dang, from, from I never Jordan. even thought about that. I haven't thought about that either until right now. That is like, such a Kobe thing to say. Yeah, if somebody ain't, just ain't said... Ain't nothing funny. Ain't nothing funny, bro. Job's not finished. Uh, wow. But yeah, that, that dude's just been a, a bucket his whole career. I don't know... I haven't watched the Nets a ton, so I don't know like how to grade his defense. But yeah, dude can put up points. Um, But you hinted at it. The King has now taken his throne as the number one uh, scorer in NBA Last history. Night. The man. <laughs> the man in the arena. He writes it on his shoes. He said, so he writes the man in the arena from, I think it was like Teddy Roosevelt wrote it. He writes it on his shoes every game. He said last night was the first time he truly felt like he was the man in the arena. And he said it felt like when that shot went down, nothing else was like going on. It was him. What a beautiful shot to do. Beautiful. Everybody yeah. was betting, you know, the famous Tomahawk dunk. Or like a sky hook, a sky hook, yeah, like Kareem or something. But no, I fade. They just look beautiful. He did his like, I would argue his second go to shot. Fam- yeah, most famous. Yeah, because I I say Tomahawk's probably one, but that 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 like fade away. There was a video of Brawny showing him the video that he took courtside. And he was like, "Hey, you knew the fade was coming, didn't you?" Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Because you can hear in Brawny's video, he's like, "Hey, fade him." <laughs> and then, then he does that. So I didn't hear that, but yeah, I heard LeBron. He was like, "Oh, you knew the fade was coming, didn't you?" <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that's awesome. But Richard Jefferson was talking about this today. I don't know if you saw this, uh, where he was heated. He was talking about the picture of like behind LeBron, where it's got the whole crowd in the in like the video or in the picture, and he said, "All I see is cell phones." Yeah, I don't necessarily hate the take, but I hate his argument because he said, "Think about MJ's shot." One thing, MJ's shot was 96. Phones were not the same thing then, so you can't say that. Could you even get uh, a phone in 96? Nah, I'm, I don't know. People had, like, those, uh... I think it was still, like, the like the brick phone, right? Yeah, the big old, like... I know, was, yeah, yeah, like the... Yeah. They BlackBerry may have had their first meeting about making a phone then. Maybe. Like, but, the flip phone just came out. Yeah. Yeah, and you're not taking a picture of anything with that. that it's gonna be, like, four pixels. Uh... But yeah, that reminded there was, me of LeBron at the WWE. That is true. The two, yeah. That, <laughs> I don't know what year that was. That that had to I'm be like, like on my my dates, but oh four maybe like after his first year, but um, but yeah, I, I mean there was if you look, I don't. There was another famous person that didn't have their phone out, and then Phil Knight. Uh, mm-hmm. So Phil Knight was sitting there, posted. Oh yeah, right. Hands crossed. Yep. yep. Next to Bronny and Bryce, 
which for those of y'all that don't know, that's the owner of Nike. Uh, and so somebody was like, that's cool. He's taking in uh, like the arguably like best player ever, basically. Watching yeah. him after he signed him 20 years ago as a 19-year-old. That's wild. That's I, crazy I, to say that, you know, you <clears throat> endorse them, basically. Yeah. yeah, alongside with him, who else was it? Jay-Z, Bad Bunny, which I barely know, but apparently the most famous dude in the world. Yep. Um, who else was there? LL Cool J, so all the dads definitely love that. Um, but yeah, packed house. Um, and you could tell when we were watching the game, like, every time a person shot the ball that wasn't named LeBron James, the whole arena was like, oh. Yeah, another and then, wasted uh, every possession. Time he'd get subbed out. They like boo, and then he'd get up off the bench, come back in. You could just hear the crowd start to get uh, louder. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, but yeah, so and what was it? The play before that, he went to get, go to that short corner spot, and you could tell he was trying to do the sky. Oh, hook. he was trying to do. And it. then they like doubled him, and we were like, "Dude, what are you <laughs> doing?" Uh, but yeah, it was an overall cool experience. I was actually shocked. They literally just had a second halftime when it happened, basically. But, yeah. They went another 20 minutes where they just talked about it, had him, like, come get the ball from Kareem. There There still wasn't a game going on. Yeah. There's still 10 seconds left in the third. Like, they just couldn't finish that. But, uh, yeah, it was a really cool experience. We were texting a lot during it. Yep. We were like, I can't believe it. This dude's really about to break this record that stood for 39, almost 40 years. That is wild. And you could tell Kareem was hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I think he he knew it was well deserved. I think you know. Yeah. He was like, "Dang, like I don't hold the record no more." But he was like, "Hey, this guy, he earned it." Yeah. Hand the ball over. Yeah. But um, you could tell that hug was like uh, a. <laughs> like, uh, like congratulations, but uh, I hate you. But that's <laughs> yeah. basically what it was. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of people were like, "Yo, LeBron's just throwing up crap." He ended up shooting sixty five percent. So he was thirteen for twenty. I didn't think he was throwing. I thought he played amazing. Yeah, I thought so. You could tell I didn't in the think beginning. He was forcing anything. You could tell like the first like two possessions. You're like, all right, this dude's trying to get it tonight. Yeah. Uh, and you could tell by what he wore to the game, the all black and the the little badge. Yeah. And then he had the headphones that said thirty eight thousand on it, and <laughs> then uh, the headband. There was so much. Yeah. You were like, this dude's getting the record tonight. The hand, the headband was a nice touch. That was I think that, that was awesome. Was sick. That's like the brawn we all remember. Yeah. Uh, that's like Heat LeBron, first Cavs LeBron. Yeah, yeah, the headband was awesome. Yeah, but uh, one thing I want to talk about though, as you mentioned when we were texting during the game, is of all games, why wear pink shoes? Yeah, I don't, I don't understand it. Um, because we were saying <laughs> you should probably wear something either like like something cool. Yeah, either your I'm not first those shoe weren't cool, but like because those are he wore the LeBron twenties. Either wear your first shoe, your favorite shoe ever, or like even the LeBron 20s just in like a cool colorway, like a sentimental, like gold, like yeah. anything, but pink. I don't know. Maybe those Random. shoes meant something to him. Maybe he was just going for something, because there's the thing about the Curry shoes. He wears the purple shoes every time they've he's wore those in the postseason they've won. So maybe mm-hmm. it's like a those are going up in, in like a, a box somewhere. He's going to sign them, and they'll never wear pink shoes again. Uh, that would be maybe that, I guess. Okay. Because maybe he's like that. not really. That's a good. Um, maybe he's just not really wore like pink shoes. I don't know. And he's like, you know, if I'm gonna wear them, I'm gonna have them one game, and that's it. And like, they're gonna be like memorable. It was a bright shoe. A shoe to wear for a crazy yeah, game. I a guess. A big moment. Uh, yeah. So I want to talk about this for a second because it's my favorite athlete ever, and I feel like this doesn't get enough light on it. The expectations this dude had coming into the league, which we were one year old, so we don't technically remember. But I've done a lot of like, I've gone down the rabbit hole of like looking to see what people were saying. And there were like ESPN analysts and stuff that were saying, if this dude is not like Michael Jordan or better, it's the biggest bust in NBA history. And they were saying, he this really dude's. He really lived up to the name then, huh? Yeah. He, uh, what, what's crazy is he. Either matched or outdid what his expectations were. Oh, and, I definitely think outdid. Because um, you got you got dudes like Zion, like he ended up getting hurt, and he's not been exactly. They're like, oh, this is the next LeBron. He's not been exactly that. And then you've got he's a little bit bigger than LeBron. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> um, but it feels like every year you've got that guy where they're like, or every few years they have that one guy that's like, oh my god, like this guy's the next goat or something. Yeah, and like. 
Chet Holmgren they called the unicorn. Obviously, he hasn't played a game yet in the NBA, but unicorn. I mean, I don't know. It, it's not often that players fit the expectations that you get put on them, especially when they're that high. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it, it's wild that he outdid those expectations, um, and people were like, "They're drafting the seventeen-year-old. This guy has to be the leader immediately, mm-hmm. completely change your franchise, and get you to title contenders in like two years." Yeah. And he did it. Like, he led a team of, there's like two guys I don't even remember the name, and you got Zedrunas Ogalskis and Delonte Williams were on that team. That's who he took to the finals. Yeah. So, I don't really blame him for that loss, because they played either the, the Celtic, no, played Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals, or the Spurs in the finals. I don't remember, but they played like one of the best dynasties ever. So... He took that squad to the finals yeah. in, like, his fourth year, um, which is wild to me. But, yeah, I think it's safe to say he's out outdone the yeah. expectations. How many years do you think LeBron has? Um, You think he hits 40,000 points? Yeah, no, I think he gets that, like, next year. Like That's what I was thinking. I think he'll at least get 45,000. I think 45,000. I think once he gets there, he's like, all right, this might be unbreakable. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, you get to 45, you might as well get to 50. Yeah, if you get 50, nobody's ever got 40. <laughs> 50 would be wild. I think he's got another four, five one years. One year with Bronny. Yeah, at least one, I would say. Um, but I was thinking earlier, like, do you think he ever gets to the point where he is bad? Or do you think he has, like, the, the thing in him where he's like, all right, if I'm ever bad, i got to stop. If anything, no, he's way too strong and talented. Uh, if anything, I would say his body would start giving out. Before yeah, like injuries and he does. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Um, yeah, everybody always talks about takes care of his body better than like any pro ever. So, uh, yeah, I think I think he's got another four. Somebody said seven, which would be wild because he'd be forty five years old in the NBA. I didn't know that uh, that he took care of his body so well. Like I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, and he really... spends like a million or more every year on his body. Well, so okay. Well, that, that explains... uh, stretches out my um. That that explains why he's playing like this at this level because that makes sense. Um, there's been like everybody says one of one as a cliche thing, but there's literally never been an athlete like this that's played this long and been that dominant. Because if you if you say twenty years of his career. It was his league for like 17, 18 of those years. There was a couple years where people were like, like maybe he got hurt or something, some flu happened. But yeah, it, it's it's just a crazy thing to watch, be able to yeah. witness. Well, if his body is not going to give out, then I think he will retire before he has that season where it's like, all right, Braun is like done. Yeah. Or even like some guys, I know they say like they're not into it anymore. Or like, oh, yeah. Something like that. But. I don't know. It's just, wild. It's crazy. He's almost like, I don't want to say Tom Brady, but it's like he just keeps going. Yeah, and you're like, because there's the tweet. I don't remember the guy, but he was like, all right, LeBron's 30. This effery can't go on any longer. Yeah. Or can't go on much longer. And what does he know? Eight years later, he has like <laughs> two titles under his belt after that. And and now the scoring record. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that guy. It's crazy. That guy's somewhere hurting because uh, he was just rooting <laughs> for LeBron to fail. But, uh. I did see a tweet, so everybody knows Gloria James' mom um, was a single mother, and um, everybody said, like, LeBron's dad somewhere uh, in a bar saying, that's my boy or something, and nobody believes him. And, I, yeah, that's that's probably wow. the truth. That's the biggest mistake a human could have made. I mean, yeah, he, he left uh, I don't know how long. Like, I don't know if it was, like, one of those situations where, like, he never saw his dad, but... Um, yeah, LeBron definitely takes care of his mom and makes sure his mom is very well known. She was on the court with his family, like after that's that happened that, and yeah. stuff. So, yeah, it's a cool thing though, the single mother thing. But uh, yep, yeah. So, I want to say your favorite NFL player, Aaron Rodgers. So, um, Come he on, said. Man. So somebody asked him the other day, "Would you go to San Francisco?" And he just said no. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't, Straight up, he was like, "I'm not going to San Francisco." Yeah, like it's not. Which, somebody said he like he read the script and said that he wasn't allowed to or something. But <laughs> uh, 
I don't know if that was true, but then that somebody asked him when he'll make his decision, and he said he's going to go on a uh, oh the like relaxing a yeah he relaxing called it a retreat re- retreat. So basically, he's saying he's going to go do shrooms and uh, ayahuasca, oh, yeah, for and sure. then once he's like where his mind in isn't his even in mind. his own yep. like, then he'll make his decision. <laughs> That's basically what he's saying. So uh, does that mean he's gone though from Green Bay? Hmm. I guess we'll find out after he um, Does gets drugs. lost. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wonder what what an Aaron Rodgers retreat. Is how does like, he though. get away with that? I don't know. I don't. I don't see how that's allowed. But I mean, I guess, I guess ayahuasca or whatever he does is like a certain level of like legal. So hmm. I don't know how, but uh, yeah. Who knows? Yeah. So I guess he's gonna go into the the mountains or something, <laughs> set up a tent. <laughs> Uh, and go up and be with nature or something. I don't know. But nice. Definitely the most, one of the most interesting athletes ever. Oh, um, he, he's a strange guy. Yeah. He does have that cool story, though, where he was at Cal and, like, he said he, he wrote a paper and then the whole class cited it wrong. 19 of the 20 students were able to redo it, but the teacher wouldn't let him redo it. And he went to go meet her, like, during her office hours outside of class. Mm-hmm. And then he went in there and said something. He was like, why won't you let me redo it? And then she just said, this is exactly why you won't amount to anything. What do you even plan on doing with your life? And he said, I'm going to play in the NFL. Oh. And she said, yeah, that's not going to happen or something. And here he is. Like years later, he's got a ring, multiple MVPs. So. Rich. <laughs> yeah, extremely rich, um, doing retreats whenever he wants. where that teacher is now. Yeah, probably retired, um, <laughs> watching their money, <laughs> watching their spending. So, uh yeah, I just hate. I, I love the stories where they've been like doubted since they were young. So I I do like him for that reason. But a lot of people like you just you know aren't, aren't the biggest fan of the guy. Yeah. Um, but with that being said, we've got the Super Bowl in what? T minus six days. Six set what, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, four days. I guess. Oh, four days. Four Even days. better. So four days away in Arizona. Um, the Eagles versus the Chiefs. We talked about Andy Reid, all-time winningest coach uh, for the Eagles. And then Nick Sirianni also was, the, I think he was the wide receiver coach for the Chiefs. Um, so, yeah, they basically swapped. And uh, Pretty cool. You got the Andy Reid Bowl and the Kelsey Bowl. Kelsey Bowl. Um, Kelsey Brothers going at it. Yeah. Uh, so, we talked about it last week. I, did we both take Eagles? Is that who we were, we were picking? I believe so, yeah. So, we're betting against um, State Farm and... Pat Mahomes. Yeah, the whole the whole uh, the script. The script. Read the script. We're betting against the script. Is basically <laughs> what we're saying. Oh, and somebody leaked a picture the other day. Did you see that of uh, what they said like the final was going to be? It was like a picture oh, of the game. Yeah, I screenshotted it just in case that's true. I remember. Uh, oh, what was it? Thirty eight, thirty one, or something. It was or 34. Eagles thirty seven, thirty four. Thirty seven, thirty four. So yeah, it looks like if that's right, the Chiefs start out uh, up twenty four, thirteen at half. So, okay. if that happens, um, yeah, it says the uh, attendance is sixty three thousand three hundred eighty one. So we'll have to Let's keep track see. of all these little stats. Um, where where did this picture come from? Like, who did? I this? don't know. It's official. Like, I know. It it That's really a scary looks. Thing. Yeah, it's got the right coaches, right record, right. <laughs> Man, so if, if the if the total is thirty seven thirty four, then we know that the NFL is after all Indeed a script. scripted. Yep. No, they're gonna change the script now because it got leaked. Yeah, they're probably somebody's they're in scrambling. A, somebody's in a repair room <laughs> freaking out, throwing away old papers and typing new ones. So yeah, the, the NFL yeah. players they probably aren't even practicing this week. They're probably like waiting until Thursday so they see the script. We need the new script. Yeah, and they're like, We can't practice till we have the script. So yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll see after it's all over. Um but yeah, I that'd be an exciting Super Bowl though, if it's thirty seven thirty four. Uh that'd be a great be a high scoring scoring. Super Bowl. So yeah, I would enjoy that. But um, we we talked about like last week a little bit. Um, I think for the Eagles, what they their wide receivers have got to ball out because the Chiefs' D line is unreal. Um, I think they'll be able to run it, but it's not going to be crazy like we saw the Chiefs Bengals game. Not a lot of like movement running the ball, but uh, yeah, I think if the Eagles' wide receivers are clicking on all cylinders, then they'll be fine. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think Jalen Hurts is due for a good game. Uh, what a better game to be due. 
Yeah. Um, I know when they played the Giants, um, January 6th, I believe, um, he didn't have any touchdowns thrown. And then they played the Giants again the 21st or 28th, something like that. Um, and had two touch or Hold on, let me back up. It was two touchdowns, and then he's thrown zero. Now he's due for two again. So, so, basically... I would bet... I'm saying it right here on this podcast. Jalen Hurts throws for at least two touchdowns. Yeah, that, that would be uh, a big bonus for them. Because, obviously, he can run for a lot, too. Yeah. So, there's a chance he runs for touchdowns. Um, yeah, if he throws two, then they might be in a, a good position. They might be in a good spot to score 37. So, uh, yeah, we we didn't say last week. Chris Stapleton, a former Kentucky guy, is singing the national anthem. So I think that is awesome because most of the time I don't know who the the person is singing the national anthem. So it's cool that Chris is doing that. Um, Very cool. And then, obviously, Rihanna is the halftime show. So it's going to be hard to top last year's. Last year's was – I don't know why they had so many people doing it. I guess it was the L.A. thing, like first time at SoFi, but – I mean, they had Kendrick, Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, Mary J. Blige, like uh, Eminem. Yeah. They had everybody there last year. So uh, Rihanna will be uh, interesting. She's got some some heat though. And <laughs> she's got some heat. I think it was Stephen A. Smith was like, "She's no Beyonce, but she'll do she'll do the job." Wow, yeah. of course. So, that yeah. guy has something to say about yeah, everything. That is true. You you like you like Stephen A. a lot. Yeah, he, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And well, I'll, I'll have to. Play this sometime, but him and Jay Williams got in one of the most heated arguments I've ever seen on <laughs> sports talk shows, like yeah. ever. So uh, yeah, that was wild. If y'all haven't seen that, look that up because it got intense. Yeah, uh, just over Kyrie. That was literally what caused it. Uh, he's like, I don't lose no sleep over Kyrie. Like <laughs> Stephen A. Smith is going crazy, but uh, yeah, it, it was wild. So we both have Eagles uh, winning the bowl, especially after reading the script. So. <laughs> we, we we know for sure. What do you think about the Super Bowl being in Arizona? Um, I think I it's mean, a good place. Yeah, I think it is. I I don't know exactly what all goes into where they pick it, but I know a bunch of cities bid on it, and it's like really? whoever gives the best pitch and best bid at the same time, and they oh, pick. Oh wow! So it's something like that. So obviously, be hard I just to get felt it. Like it was random. Yeah, be hard to get it in like Buffalo. That would suck. Uh. <laughs> But yeah, it is kind of random being in State Farm. But I, I guess it's like a, not according to the script. Yeah, yeah, not 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 to the script though. <laughs> well, that's where the uh, Michigan and TCU playoff game was too. So yeah. I guess they're just trying to, they tried to like do that as like a, the first like test of like how that'll be. But mm. yeah, yeah I, I didn't know how they picked um, where the Super Bowl was. Yeah, I didn't there's know there was a like cities bid. that bid and and like give a pitch on why they. Deserve it because I think it's all like based on like revenue and different stuff for the city. So mm. obviously cities want it bad. Like right. LA last yeah. year, I think it was just like that stadium's cool. Let's just do it there. It was new, yeah. But. Yeah, but State Farm maybe it's just like it's cool they roll in the grass. So like for those of y'all that didn't know, it's an indoor stadium, but they grow the grass outside and then move it in. Mm-hmm. So like I guess that's a cool thing with it. But uh, yeah, it, it's a random spot. Yeah. But um. Yeah, you got any, any last things to say? I think that'll do it for this podcast. It's been a great one. Yeah. Uh, a lot of news. A lot of, a lot of the basketball news. And there will be a lot of basketball stuff happen after this podcast because, like I said, Fred Van Vliet might be on the move um, and a lot of big names. So uh, a couple of days left of that trade deadline. But So thank you all for tuning in to another podcast. We'll be back next week to discuss... Uh, if the script was right. So we'll, we'll see you next week. But thank you all. Have a great rest of the week. And peace. See you later.